We're mm-hmm. going to start with the crab cakes. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take the scallop, we're going to put it in, the food processor. Shop knife, says shop knife. <laughs> we're going to add, we, I, we do that all the time. Okay. Means you. We're going to take some I'm cream. I'm so sorry. It's all right. We're going to take some cream and we're going to season with salt and pepper. You have the recipe and put in a food processor and basically blend it. Do we pass it? Yes. Yes. Uh, again, th- as opposed to breadcrumbs, the mousseline acts as the binder. It's a much lighter version. Although it's got a little cream in it. It's Take very important to keep the mousseline ingredients cold when you're blending it because you don't want it to split. So the scallops have to be very cold, the cream has to be very cold. Good point. Okay. And that's crab meat that has been cooked already, right? Yes. Yeah. that's uh, Actually, that was a pasteurized crab meat um, that they ordered for us, but you can clearly use fresh cook. You could cook your own crab, which would be best. Mm-hmm. Then let's show them the tomato technique. Now, yeah. uh, y- people hate to peel tomatoes, but it's fairly easy and you, you don't really digest tomatoes well, your stomach doesn't handle it well, so it's always a nice idea to peel tomatoes and, and just use the rest of the tomato. So what Paul's doing is actually putting a cross, a knife cross on the back and the front of the tomato and then we're going to drop it into uh, boiling water, correct? Yes sir. So he's taken out the stem and then just mark the cross in the bottom with the tip right. of the knife. Yeah. And then we're going to cook it for what? Uh, uh, 20 seconds. Not too long, you just want it to almost just to peel the skin. You don't really want to cook the tomato. And then we're going to shock it in, uh, in ice water just to stop that cooking process. And what happens is that the combination of the hot and the cold, the shock to the tomato, creates a separation of the skin. So it's very easy to, sp- to peel. And, uh, that's why you score it, so it's easy to peel right. off. You see how easy that is? And uh, again, it's, it's worth it. With, with uh, peppers and tomatoes, which you don't really digest the peel well on, and it doesn't really have those imp- important nutrients. There's no r- reason to keep it. Uh, it just creates a much better mouthfeel when you eat it, and you'll see that a bit later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process for any variety of tomatoes you can get, yellow, red, green, and we're then going to um, actually clean and remove the um, inside, which we later on are going to use for our sauce. And um, you'll see the technique. So we actually remove the pulp and get down to, not the skin because the skin is gone, but the body of the tomato um, because we don't want it to be too liquidy. And the end result is going to be this, okay? So it's just a quick blanched, uh, shocked, peeled body of tomato. And again, you can use various tomatoes for that. And that we're going to then take, you're fine. We're going to take those and we're going to add it to our um, crab cake mixture. And that's going to be the base. Now what we're going to do with that, we're going to mix it and we will bake that in the oven for approximately six or so minutes at about 350 degrees. And now again, the scallop doesn't need that, the mousseline doesn't need that much cooking. The crab has been cooked, so you don't have to cook it for too long. The whole world uses sriracha, but you can use any type of chili ketchup kind of sauce whether you like sugar, garlic, depending on which one you want to do. So we're going to put that in. It's actually going to start creating some redness. I'm going to add a little bit of um, yuzu to make it a little bit fresher and give it that Japanese citrus-like flavor. Mm, it smells fantastic. Um, you, d- you don't want to add the yuzu too much early because you don't want it to start breaking uh, the mayonnaise, but in this purpose, it's fine. So we added sesame oil, sriracha. Uh, oh, and our secret ingredient for this one is a little bit of condensed milk. The condensed milk adds sweetness and this nice creaminess. You guys all know condensed milk, right? It's what you <laughs> drink in coffee. So we make a shellfish bisque, you know, by taking vegetables and shells, water, uh, possibly fish bones, make a, a stock like a fumé, add a little bit of cream, a little bit of tomato, uh, tomatoes, a little bit of tomato um, puree, and we make a bisque. Now, why does that make sense? Is because we're using a crab cake, which is shellfish, obviously, so the bisque makes sense and, and kind of has, uh, so it has an Asian feel to the dish in a sense, but some f- classic French sensibility at the same time. What we're doing is uh, we actually put a potato, just a little tricks of the trade. We took a little slice of potato and we put the crab cake on that just to make it easier to pick it up. Otherwise, it's going to stick. So is the pot- potato actually meant to be eaten with the crab cake? Or Absolutely just a not. Thing? No, okay. No, so please. It's just a it's a raw Oh, it's a raw slice of potato. Yeah, it's just a vessel to mm-hmm. hold the crab. Green tomatoes are a little more acidic than, than red tomatoes are, so you're getting you know, a different profile of tomatoes. Mm-hmm. So that's very important, um, flavor-wise. Visually speaking, obviously, as hopefully you'll find out soon, uh, using 
three tomatoes makes a much more interesting visual presentation than using a single tomato. Um, we just kind of dressed it with a little bit of um, oil and um, a little bit of yuzu, you know, almost like a vinaigrette. We, and we seasoned with salt and tomato, uh, so salt and pepper. The, the same diced tomatoes as just now? Yep. Exactly. And you see, let me uh, get you a visual of this. See, it's starting to kind of bubble. What we're going to do now is we are actually going to, um, you just go to Chinatown, you get agar agar, and you uh, set it with um, cream, mm -hmm. cream fresh, let's mm -hmm. say, and yuzu, and then you blend it, and you're going to get this texture. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to set that over. Right? Pass I'm just going to garnish this dish. All right, what we're going to do now is we're just going to whip some air into it just to kind of give it a nice... Again, it's not just the look. When you aerate it, it's just a much lighter thingy. And Chef, this recipe is, is not in the recipe pack. So oh, no, of course not. Yeah. Could we just take purchased fish stock and then add some cream to it? Why? Some seasoning. Why? I mean, you could, but I wouldn't. Okay. I would make some, take some bones from a fish, which you can buy for nothing at any fishmonger, mm -hmm. make a little fish stock, and... Oh, and then we took a little bit of uh, herbed oil. Pretty good. good. Yeah, I like it. Let's put it on the menu. Yeah.